cell phones, you have no electronics on board, you have no GPS, and you really have no idea. Well, what you can do is use celestial navigation to help you out. So here's the basics of how it works. All right, so let's say I'm, I'm out there and let's see, I see a star here, okay? And I recognize that star. I just know that particular star in the sky, in the sky is star A. I'm just gonna give it a name, star A. Okay, and let's also suppose that right now our t the time is 6 p.m., okay? Now, if somebody out there is watching this video and actually knows how to celestial uh, navigate, uh, clearly I'm going to be oversimplifying, but I think for the most everybody, you'll get the, the basics of what I'm talking about, and that's the whole purpose of the video. All right, so here I am. I'm out in the middle of the ocean. I see star A. Okay, I recognize. I know it's star A, and it's 6 p.m. Now, from my location, okay, I see star A, let's say, at 50 degrees, 50 degrees above the horizon. Now, how would I get that measurement? Okay, so the way I would get that measurement is using a nautical instrument. You've probably seen it. I'm going to try to sketch it real quick. It's called a sextant. Okay, it looks like this. You've probably seen mariners using it. And what they do, they pick this thing up, they look through it, and then they kind of swing something back and forth, and it's able to tell them the angle of an object above the horizon. And really do have to be very specific uh, with these measurements. Okay, So anyways, I take my section out. I know it's 6 p.m., and I look at star A, and I'm seeing it 50 degrees above the horizon at 6 p.m. on this particular day. All right. So what does this mean? Okay, if I have those two pieces of information, I, I'm on my way to finding my position at, at sea. Well, there is a book that navigators use, okay, and, um, oh boy, if I'm not mistaken, I think the book is called like HO229. It's kind of a weird name for a book. It's been a, it's been a long time. But anyways, it's essentially a reference of all these stars that we look at, these primary stars that we use for navigation, and I go to this book, and I'm saying, okay, it's 6 p.m., and I'm looking at star A. And the book will tell me, well, star A should be located at this position, okay, at 6 p.m. Okay, at 6 p.m., you should be seeing si uh, star A directly over your head, 90 degrees, right? So if I'm standing out here in the middle of the ocean at this position, okay, not where I'm at, Okay, at this particular position, I would see star A directly above my head at 90 degrees. Okay, so if uh, let's suppose a star A just fell straight down onto the onto the Earth, it would be at this position at 6 p.m. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you, right? So um, if I'm right here and I'm looking at star A, I would be looking straight straight up, right above my head, up in the sky. But obviously, at 6 p.m., I'm looking at star A and I see it at 50 degrees in the sky, not 90 degrees, not above my head. So with those two pieces of information, okay, I can use some trigonometry. Okay, this is gonna be a right angle, I have a degree here, I have a location here, and I'm not gonna get into the math because it's just, that's not the purpose of this video. But essentially, what you're able to do, what the book is able to do is to say, listen, if you're seeing star A at 50 degrees, okay, and not at 90 degrees, well, the only way you can do that is that you have to be a certain distance away from its location at 6 p.m., okay? And it's basically going to build us a little circle here. So let's use, let's just make a number up. Let's say in order to see star A at 50 degrees, okay, at 6 p.m. at night, you have to be a 900 miles away to be able to see that observation, okay? Well, I could be 900 miles here, or I could be 900 miles anywhere along a big circle, right? I could see that same observation over here. Okay, I could be over here at 6 p.m. and still see that at 50 degrees. So that's not really helping me either because I could be here, I could be here, I could be here, I could be here. All these positions are 900 miles away from a star a's location and I'm, I can I can see the star at 50 degrees at all these various positions so how could I help myself out here I mean it's a, it's a I mean it's better than nothing I mean at least I know generally that I'm along this this uh, 
circle, if you will, at 6 p.m. And by the way, the technical word for this is what they call an LOP, line of position. So, well, you're looking at it as a circle, but technically we call it LOP, a line of position. So I'm along this, somewhere along this circle. Okay, and of course the circle just continues out. So it's a start. So how can I help, you know, really get, get an accurate uh, idea of where I'm at? Well, I look in the sky and I look for something else. Okay, I come over here and I see, lo and behold, I see star B twinkling over here. And I'm like, oh, star B. Let me go ahead and take a look at you at the same time. Well, actually, let's say it's 6.01 or 6.02 p.m. And I do the same thing with star B. And I go through the whole uh, uh, rigmarole, just as I did here. I, I measure its angle. I, I look in the book and everything else. And I and the book tells me, hey, the only way you could be seeing star B at this particular angle is you would have to be along, let's say, this line. Okay, this line of position. So now I have two lines of position. All right, I can be seeing star B, say, somewhere along this circle at 6.02. So you can see where the two lines or the two circles are crossing seems to be the obvious place where I'm going to be at, right? And that is called a fix in navigation terms, F-I-X, a fix. And that's your, your position uh, based upon your, your navigation efforts. So that's, uh, that's the basics of celestial navigation. And let me just actually throw something else in. If I wanted to, to make my fix location more accurate, what, what could I do? Well, if here I use two stars, maybe I want to look at another star, star C. And I want to continue to get more and more lines of position, more circles. So you can see it gets pretty involved. And actually, um, when I uh, was in the Navy, and I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, in a former life, I was a U.S. Navy officer. I was a surface warfare officer. And on one of my tours, I used to navigate a billion-dollar warship. That was my re responsibility. So I had a bunch of people, a bunch of equipment. And, uh, you know, I took this stuff, you know, very seriously because I had to. But it would say, I would say, for our team, probably take us anywhere from, say, 15 to 30 minutes of observations with our sextants and doing some pretty good level mathematics um, to work out and get these positions. So if it looks involved, um, that's because it is involved. Uh, but the thing about it, the beauty about it is without any electronics at all, simply armed with a sextant, a book, and some math, okay, and some obviously some training, you can you can locate your position anywhere on Earth, and I think that's really cool. Using the stars, I mean that's amazing. And then yeah, the other thing too is you should really get appreciation of um, you know how ancient mariners, you know how they established trade throughout the earth, uh, throughout the world, and of course all you history buffs can kind of really get into the value of uh, of navigation. Well, how it plays its role in history. It's really, it's really amazing.